extra, extra, read all about it, hot off the presses. Hey there, it's Theo from Geeky Gamer Guy. This video will be showing how to play fit to print from flat out games. Notes, this video shows prototype components and is subject to change. First, I'll start with how to play the standard setup, then I'll cover the advanced setup and additional modes after. Be sure to check the handy links in the description below to help you out. The news never sleeps and we gotta get the scoop before everyone else. So we better get started. Fit to Print is a competitive real-time tile laying game for 1 to 6 players. Each player runs their own newspaper. Over the course of the game, everyone will report and lay out three front pages that will increase in size with each round. Players will need to gather enough articles, photos, and ads <laughs> we gotta keep the lights on to fill up their page, all the while keeping the mood as balanced as possible. After each round, pages are evaluated and scored. Then in the end, the player with the most victory points wins. To set up for a standard game, give each player a front page board, player aid slash character card, and a 3D desk. Placing the board showing the Friday Saturday side, making sure the board is oriented with the title of the paper at the top of the page. Place the 3D desk to either side of the front page board, and flip the character card to the side that shows player aid text. The other side is for the advanced setup, which I'll cover a little bit later. Place all the newspaper tiles face down in a pile, shuffle them up thoroughly, and it doesn't matter if the tiles overlap. Sometimes you gotta dig for the perfect story. Place starting centerpiece tiles shown with stars in the title in a stack. Then shuffle the remaining centerpiece tiles, being sure to flip some of them into a stack to be used later. Grab any sort of timer to place in view of all players. Set the desired time based on the experience you prefer. Frantic, three minutes. Standard, four minutes. And relaxed, five minutes. Place the finishing tokens equal to the number of players in order within reach of everyone. Now we're ready to begin. A game of fit to print plays out over three rounds or days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Each round the board to place tiles will increase in size, starting with the lighter Friday side, then darker Saturday, and then all players will flip over their board to Sunday to fill up. Oh, that's a whole lot of page. In each round there are two phases, reporting phase and layout phase, with all players simultaneously playing through both phases on their own. Before a round begins, players choose a centerpiece tile to place on their board. For the first round Friday, each player will be given a random starting centerpiece to begin with. They must now place it on their board so that it covers the star printed on the page. Players will be able to move it around during the layout phase, but the centerpiece must always cover the star. To begin a round, make sure all players are ready and then start the timer. During the reporting phase, players must take tiles to place on their 3D desk. Using only one hand, pick up a face up or face down tile. If face down, bring it to their desk and flip it face up. Then decide whether to keep it or not. Hmm. If not, place the tile face up back in the center of the table. If a player decides to keep it, Place it on the 3D desk. Tiles on the desk can be looked at at any time, but must remain there during the reporting phase. Once the player feels they have enough tiles to fill up the current front page, they say layout and can no longer take any more tiles for the round. During the layout phase, players take the tiles stacked on a desk and lays them out in front of themselves. There are three different types of tiles in varying sizes and horizontal or vertical orientation. The player then places those tiles on their board, following these rules. Tiles must stay within the grin for the current day. Centerpiece tiles must cover the star as I said earlier. All tiles must stay upright, meaning the text or picture on the tile must not be rotated. Articles of the same color, photos, and ads may not be orthogonally adjacent to one another. Otherwise they will be flipped during scoring. Tiles may go over the fold in the middle of the front page board though. Players can also voluntarily flip tiles to avoid having too much white space on their board or tiles remaining on their 3D desk to avoid penalties during scoring. Once a player has finished laying out their tiles, they say PRINT and takes the lowest unclaimed finishing token. Keep unplaced tiles, if any, on their 3D desk. They will get a penalty for not placing them, but they also can be used in the following round. Now let's go into detail on the tiles. Articles are worth one or two points based on their size and come in three different types. Pink, sports and entertainment, blue news, and green technology. Two of the same type can't be orthogonally adjacent to one another. They also have a mood of either one or two good news or bad news faces. 
Players want to keep their news balanced, neither too much good or bad news to avoid penalty during scoring. Photos are worth one point for every specific article type or mood symbol shown on the tile that's orthogonally adjacent to it. Ads are what keep the paper afloat. They can't be placed orthogonally adjacent to other ads and gives an amount of revenue for each dollar sign on the ad. At the end of the game, the player with the lowest ad revenue will lose points or in a three to six player game will go out of business. So start cold calling. Players will also need to be mindful of their largest group of white spaces because during round end scoring, they'll gain or lose points based on the size compared to other players. Once everyone has said print and claim finishing tokens, each of their papers are scored. If the timer runs out before a player goes to print, they must immediately stop and grab the next available token. Once all players have finished their paper, the boards are checked for errors. Each player should check the board of the player to their left. Any adjacent same color articles, photos, and ads must be flipped until the problem is resolved. Any tiles outside the grid for the current day must be removed and placed on the player's 3D desk. Choose a player to be the scorekeeper and record scores in each of these categories. Out of the points of all articles, unplaced articles on the 3D desk subtracts one point each. Photos earn points based on articles or mood faces adjacent to them of the specific type shown. Centerpiece tiles score the points shown and the additional bonuses, if any. Find the large group of white spaces and add them up. Then the player or players with the smallest group earns two points. The player with the most loses one point and all others gain one point. Check to see if the page's mood is balanced, meaning an equal number of good news and bad news faces. If not, subtract the difference. Then for every tile on the 3D desk, regardless of the type or size, loses one point. Lastly are ads. For every dollar symbol on them, write the total. Unlike everything else, scores for ad revenue are calculated until the end of three rounds, and the player with the fewest will lose points or go out of business entirely. After scoring, set aside all used centerpiece tiles, then flip over all other used tiles from their front pages, not the three desks, those stay, face down to the center of the table and shuffle them for the next round. After Friday and Saturday, set out a number of centerpiece tiles on the table. Going in order from the lowest to highest finishing tokens, each player selects one to place on their page, just like you did in the first round, making sure the star is covered. After Sunday, the player with the lowest ad revenue in a 3 to 6 player game goes completely out of business. Or in a 2 player game, if a player has $5 less ad revenue than the other player, they lose 10 points. The player with the most points wins. In case of a tie, the player with the most ad revenue wins. If there's still a tie, the player with the lowest finishing token on Sunday wins. After a few games, players may want to add in extras to spice up their games with character player powers or breaking news or both. With character player powers, use the character card side with the unique player power that can be performed. During breaking news at setup, shuffle the three Friday, Saturday, and Sunday breaking news decks and select one card from each. At the beginning of each round, reveal that day's breaking news for everyone to see. These cards add restrictions, requirements, or bonuses for players on each day. Fit to Print can also be played solo, in not just one, but two modes. The Standard Mode and Puzzle Mode. In Standard Mode, all rules from the multiplayer game applies, with these few exceptions. In Solo Mode, white spaces score based on the size of the largest group. Three points if it's three squares or less, one point if it's four to seven squares, or minors one point for eight or more squares. Select from two centerpiece tiles to place one on Saturday and Sunday. At the end of the game, you must have at least $12 in ad revenue to score. So remember that. Now puzzle mode introduces a set day and group of tiles to use to optimally place for the most points. Players can play a time to five minutes or relaxed with no time limit. <laughs> My brain is already on fire. Scoring articles, photos, centerpieces, and mood are the same as the standard game, with a white space scored as the standard solo game. Ads are not scored, but must be placed without conflict. That's it. Now you're ready to get playing. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to help out the channel, tap the like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to not miss out on future videos. Until next time, stay geeky. Keep gaming. Horizontal or vertical orientation. Plus one on the table.
Nah, plus one on the table. Like, why not both? Both. Hello, both. Hello, both. 